the best sixth grade basketball player you've ever seen. That's what the Huffington Post claimed about Julian Newman when the kid was just 12 years old. The tiny guard wasn't just one of the best prospects in the world, he was a television and internet sensation. Julian Newman has found out firsthand the power of the internet. Footage of Newman playing varsity basketball hit the web on Monday. At an age where most kids can't even make a shot from the three-point line, he was averaging 13 points and 10 assists per game. He was an icon of middle school basketball, the most marketed 12-year-old basketball player in the world. And that's precisely how the Tampa Bay Times labeled Newman in 2014. Julian had the ability to make a living from basketball, whether or not he made it to the pros. In a similar case to Mikey Williams, his online status was one of being a generational talent. One of the most influential young men on the planet with a platform so big that he could never be forgotten. But something changed. Newman lost his celebrity status and became regarded as one of the most hated high school players of all time. created a social debacle that turned people against him, making his chances of making it in pro basketball seem further and further away. I'm gonna be the best player in the NBA, not only in the NBA, but the best player in the NBA. I mean, how could this happen? A player with this much perceived talent and upside becoming a forgotten has-been. But to understand what happened, you have to start at the beginning of his journey to almost stardom. Julian Newman was born on September 6, 2001 in Orlando, Florida. Julian grew obsessed with basketball at a very early age. He was three years old when he started to develop his familiarity with the orange ball. He never experimented with other sports, like so many other kids do. He knew his passion for basketball was going to be the fuel for his dream. All of this was also due to the enormous love of basketball his father, Jamie Newman, had. He helped instill discipline and dedication in a sport that would end up becoming Julian's passion. Jamie, who was of Puerto Rican descent, played point guard for Colonial High School in Orlando. His mother, Vivian Gonzalez, also had a basketball background, having played for University High School also in Orlando. Growing up in a family like that, it was clear that Julian Newman's future was going to be driven towards basketball success. Jamie was coaching Julian during his early development years, reportedly forcing him to score 100 free throws, 200 floaters, and 200 jump shots every day before the end of practice. Jamie was not only a basketball coach, he was also a history teacher. He pushed Julian to sign up for some recreational leagues. These leagues were mostly populated by players much older than Newman, who in addition to being small for his age, was even more handicapped by the fact that he was younger. During the fall of 2012, Julian's young career would change forever. It was this time he transferred to an Orlando private school named Doney Christian School. This was the school his father taught and coached. When he was only in fifth grade, Newman made his debut on the middle school team, but the truth is, it didn't last long. After a 91-point performance, yes, yes, you heard right. We played him with uh, middle school um, competition this year, and he scored 91 points. 91 points at age 11, Julian was promoted to the varsity team. Imagine the four-foot, five-inch guard who weighed about 70 pounds during that time going out on the court to play with some of the best athletic prodigies in the entire state. A seemingly impossible situation in a sport where size and weight are so important. These characteristics directly influence your abilities in the game of basketball. Well, for Julian, it didn't matter. In his first three starts, Newman averaged 12.4 points, 11 assists, and 4.3 steals per game. The kid was a natural distributor, being able to find his teammates without difficulty. He accomplished this while having, without a doubt, the lowest point of view on the court. He was not only the best passer on the team, Julian was the best passer in the entire state of Florida. His play style directly helped his team win, as Doney Christian posted a spectacular record of 21 wins and 6 losses during the season. Naturally, this phenomenon began to catch the attention of basketball fans across the country, who watched as the tiny guard was able to lead a varsity team while only being in the 5th grade. Julian was still far from his potential. This hype process had only just begun. While Julian was in sixth grade, he averaged 17 points per game. And that's when all hell broke loose. A video on the Scout Focus YouTube channel showed off some of the kids' plays, in addition to his spectacular ball handling. This video went completely viral. It now has nearly 4 million views, and most of them came shortly after it was uploaded. It was December 2012, and Newman had more and more eyes on the back of his head. 
Julian not only made the front pages of Sports Illustrated and the New York Times, but also began to star in television appearances. He was given appearances on shows like Good Morning America, Conan, and The Steve Harvey Show. Julian was an excellent basketball player, but it didn't stop there. The guard had cemented an incredible status, a milestone for a youngster who had done nothing more than begin his career and was already beginning to achieve a fame that far surpassed that of some professional players. At 13 years of age, he was doing things that a player his age should not be able to. His crazy style of play was starting to wreak havoc online. With this kind of pressure, it's not easy to take. There was a sector of basketball fans who didn't applaud this circus like the rest, partly because of the excessive coverage of the high school kid's career. Plus, his flashy play style seemed to resonate selfishness and arrogance. Julian, being a disliked player, added to the pressure. Pressure which is not easy for a teenager to take. Opposing players knew that if they managed to humiliate him in any way, his play would go viral. Provocations and fights were a common factor in the Orlando players' games. His talent, at the time, was still able to withstand the enormous pressure. Newman finished the 2014-2015 season averaging 19.8 points, 10.2 assists, and 3.2 steals per game. Beyond his averages, his biggest highlight of the season would come in his personal duel with Kyrie Walker, an anticipated game in which Julian scored a spectacular 52 points, a performance that was so iconic that it continues to appear in memes all over the internet to this day. Newman dazzled with his changes of pace, his pump fake game, and his long range shot. The networks did, as you can imagine, go up in flames. The phenom was already unstoppable by the time he reached the logical age for high school ball. During his sophomore year at Downey Christian, Newman averaged 31.9 points, 7.8 assists, and 3.1 steals per game, all while shooting an amazing 54% from the three-point line with over 12 three-pointers attempted per game. We're talking about a higher level of efficiency than Stephen Curry in his unanimous MVP season. Averages that increased even more during his junior season. He posted a whopping 34.7 points, seven assists, and four steals per game. This gave us the feeling this kid was going places. During his senior year of high school, Newman transferred to Prodigy Prep. This was a brand new school created by his own father. While his averages increased more this year, his efficiency did not. Newman struggled against some of the best teams on the circuit, putting up some truly woeful performances that were accompanied with all sorts of incidents. Ego was beginning to leave its mark on his personality and interactions. The tremendous pressure during his career began to take its toll. The rivals knew how to hurt him and used every opportunity to target the guard to make him suffer. As the entire internet began to turn its back on Newman, they harshly criticized one of the most hated prospects in basketball history. Newman was filling up the stats with empty numbers. Just when it really seemed that Julian's dream of reaching the NBA was at least minimally realistic, Julian began to realize the harsh reality. A player with those averages always starts to receive interest from NCAA Division I scouts. However, there was a reason why this interest was not being received by Newman, and that is, he was too small. At 5 foot 7 inches, Julian had a huge handicap when it came to playing basketball, something that would become even more important based on the competition level he was playing against. Division I coaches knew that this problem is very difficult to overcome in modern basketball, where guards are getting bigger and bigger. Think about today's NBA. The pure point guard position has ceased to exist as we know it. The handler concept is becoming more and more common in a league where players no longer need good passes to find good scoring situations. The generation of pure point guards like John Stockton, Chris Paul, or Rajon Rondo has given way to a generation where the NBA's assist leaders have the size of classic big men. Maybe two decades ago, Julian would have been an NBA option. Back when the NBA floor had a five foot seven spud web, using his excessive speed and jumping ability in order to stay competitive. Also, a 5'3 Muggsy Bogues. He used his dribbling, court vision, and fundamentals to provide worth on the court. In this current NBA, six feet tall is considered short. Being any shorter than that makes success almost impossible. Jamie Newman claims his son received as many as 15 offers from Division I colleges, which would provide no reason not to select one. Many fans claim that no college was interested in the guard, and not just because of his height. His attitude change since becoming a star has been for the worse. And this dude pissing me off. When I get angry, I don't know, something takes over. His body language and ego showed the frustration of a player who was realizing he was never going to achieve his goals and dreams. 
After finishing high school, Julian tried to find offers in other leagues overseas in order to relaunch his professional career, but it seems it wasn't possible. Luckily, the internet has always been a very important part of Newman's life. His incredible social media presence and following has allowed him to make a living from his basketball skills. More and more creators are making full-time incomes from creating basketball content for platforms like YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Julian has always been a top-tier guest. He has participated in tournaments such as the Creator League and the Basketball Tournament. This tournament is one of the highest level tournaments as its rosters are largely made up of professional basketball players trying to relaunch their careers by winning the juicy $1 million prize it offers. But Julian didn't perform well at either event. Is disappointment a fair definition of his career? I don't think so. Every year, there are over 350 colleges in Division I that have rosters of 15 players. Of all those 5,000 players, only 60 are drafted. Making it to the NBA is not just an impossible dream for Newman, it's an impossible dream for 99.9% .9 of people. Not only do you have to have the athleticism to be able to play basketball at the highest level, but you have to have unique mental qualities, resilience, sacrifice, perseverance, and most importantly, the absence of ego. The pure hunger for basketball is often not enough. Newman's problem, to a large extent, has been about being in the spotlight throughout his teenage years. No human being is capable of withstanding that kind of pressure, especially at that young age. Jamie tried to live his dreams through his son, putting him in what he felt was the best possible position to succeed. Within all these decisions, there were many mistakes. Jamie saddled Julian with a backpack of great weight, one that no teenager in the world can carry. And even if his love for basketball remained intact, in life, sometimes hurdles can remain too great.